You know, I was really looking forward to today since Ben told me that he had a beautiful sister that he knew I would love. But I show up to the dinner, and who does he introduce me to? Some ugly old lady. I mean, I wasn't expecting much, but you really showed me a new kind of low today. What? I was born an only child, so I've always wanted an older sister since I was a little girl. A beautiful, perfect older sister who is mature and can help me with anything in life. But I guess what I get is an ugly old lady who doesn't even seem reliable for anything. I don't need a sister if this is what I'm getting. Um, Sabrina? Are you okay? I thought we just became friends after getting to know each other at the dinner earlier. Why are you saying these things to me? Of course, I'm going to act friendly with you if Ben's there. But the truth is that I was really disappointed by you. I was really excited to meet you since Ben kept bringing you up about how proud he was to have you as his older sister. So, I dressed up all nice and showed up to see a wrinkly old lady waiting for us. How is it even possible that the two of you were born 10 years apart? <laughs> I just wanted to go home at that point, but I didn't want Ben to feel bad for bringing me, so I just acted as nice as I could. And you think it's the right thing to do to say all of those horrible things to my face after we leave? Couldn't you have at least kept those thoughts to yourself? Preferably to the grave? It isn't too hard to imagine how someone would feel after being called an ugly old lady, you know? I told you all this because I feel the need to make things clear. What do you mean? Wasn't I adorable at the dinner, all smiley and happy? Well, I didn't want you to get the wrong idea and start treating me like a younger sister, so I told you how I really felt. This is why I have trust issues. Whatever, good for you. The bottom line is, don't talk to me ever again, okay? I don't want to be seen talking to some old hag like you, and nor do I want to waste my time talking to you. Could you stop mocking me just because you're young? You're going to end up regretting it when you're my age, trust me. Do you really think I'm making fun of your age itself just because I'm younger than you? I would never do that. I know that I'll be your age one day too. It sounds like that's exactly what you're doing right now. Why would you make fun of me for being an ugly old hag if it wasn't because I'm old? Because you're ugly. Besides, I'm not even making fun of you. I just hate being near people like you, so I'm being very honest with you and myself. I don't understand a single thing you're saying. I'm saying that it's not a matter of choice. I just inherently hate being near people like you, and I can't help it. A lot of ladies who are over their 30s are so obnoxious and full of pride, and I absolutely hate people like that. See, I have a proper reason to repel you as a person. What kind of reason is that? It's not like every single person that's over 30 is mean. No, every single one of you is horribly mean. Just take a look at my workspace and you'll see that I'm telling the truth. What? All the women over 30 there are so prideful and unkind. They're all jealous of me because I'm so young and they practically bully me like in grade school. So I decided that the best thing to do and respond is to hate their guts back. Oh, well, I'm sorry you had to go through that. As a matter of fact, it really isn't just the people who I work with, it's every single middle-aged person. They all disgust me. So I decided to hate everyone who's over 30 years old. That's why I hate you as well, Molly. I wish you people who hate young people just because you're jealous should all just disappear. Hey Ben, I want to talk about Sabrina with you. Do you have a minute? Yeah? What's up? Well, it seems that Sabrina hates my guts. What? Why'd she hate you? You guys barely met. She seemed to like you a lot at the dinner last night. That's what I thought too, but I received a text from her today. She said that she couldn't believe that the two of us were 10 years apart and that she didn't want an ugly old hag that's over 30 to be her older sister. She said that to you? Yeah, but don't misunderstand her. 
Apparently, she's been through a lot with her colleagues at work. And now she has a sort of phobia towards people who are middle aged or older. What do you mean she has a phobia? And why'd that apply to you? She said that her colleagues at work have been very unkind towards her. And that the people who attacked her for being young are all over 30 years old. So she started to grow and initiate fear for people around that age inside of her. So now she hates you just because you're in the same age frame as her. How does that make any sense? Just because you're the same age as them doesn't mean you're as mean or disrespectful as those people. Well, it seems like it makes sense in her mind. She told me not to speak to her ever again, and that she has no intentions of getting close to me. But, I mean, we are, as a matter of fact, becoming in-laws, so I was wondering if you had any ideas as to how I could become closer to Sabrina. First things first, but I'm sorry for all this. I didn't even think that Sabrina would be capable of saying such mean things to anyone. In her name, I apologize. It's fine, and it's nothing for you to apologize about. Thanks. So this is all because of her trouble at work, huh? That's probably the reason why she's been so insistent on becoming a stay-at-home wife after we get married. What? I've actually heard about the fact that she's been having some trouble at work on a few occasions. She's been asking me over and over again if she could just take care of the home instead of the both of us working. So if her problems at work are getting to her that badly, then that's probably why she doesn't want to be there anymore. But it'll be difficult for me to single-handedly make enough money for the both of us to have good lives. But even when I recommend that she move to another workplace, she told me that she was mentally broken after working at her old job. So I'm not too sure what the best move is to make at this point. I probably wouldn't know what to do either if I was in your shoes. Realistically speaking, if you don't have enough money, then there aren't many options. But then again, I know it's difficult for you to ask your wife to work, even though she's so mentally worn out. Exactly. I just concluded that I need to work as hard as I can for the both of us. We'll see where that takes us. I've always had a reputation for my endless energy. I can work from day in to day out and I'll be completely fine. That doesn't sound like too great of a plan to me. Are you sure you're going to be happy living like that? Of course, I'll be happy. I'm sure Sabrina will gradually get better, if I can give her some time to rest at home. And if she's better, then I'm happy. I'll also be sure to tell her how much you've helped me throughout life, and how much of an amazing person you are. Maybe that way she'll be able to acknowledge that some people are more respectable than others. She'll be willing to become closer to you. I hope so. Sorry for causing another problem for the two of you. You haven't caused anything. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Ben. Of course. And thanks for coming to the dinner with us yesterday. It really did mean a lot. Sabrina and I are going to have the best wedding that you've ever been to, so get ready for that. I can't believe you. How could you do this to me? Why the hell did you push me into the pool? This is the first time in my life anyone's ever done something so horrible to me. Oh well, sorry for stealing your first time. <laughs> this was the only way I could think of. No hard feelings, okay? What do you mean? I wanted you to go home no matter what. I didn't want you at my wedding. But you wouldn't just leave even if I told you to, would you? So I thought about how to get you to leave no matter what. That's when I came up with the idea to sabotage your outfit so you wouldn't be able to stay. So I just pushed you into the pool. <laughs> what? So you just decided that it was okay to push me into the pool? You're crazy! What else was I supposed to do? I hate old ladies like you. Did you expect me to just sit still and watch while you ruined my once-in-a-lifetime experience? How many times do I have to tell you that I'm not an old lady? I thought Ben explained that I wasn't the horrible person that you thought I was. Yes, he did. And it made me hate you even more. What? Ben's a very family-first type of guy. He sat beside me and spoke about you and how you're an amazing person and that I had the wrong impression about you. 
You were always a caring older sister who would always take care of Ben when his parents couldn't, right? But the more he spoke about you, the more I became annoyed that he sounded like he loved someone else more than me. So the more he tries to make me like you, the more I hate you. How does that make sense? He's been especially annoying about you lately. No matter where we are, he starts talking about you. I absolutely hate the way you've made him. And I absolutely hate you yourself even more! Don't you get it? The only reason that Ben's been talking about me a lot was because he wanted us to get along with each other. He cares about the both of us, and he'd give anything for us to be good sisters-in-law. Well, he's failed miserably to accomplish that. I mean, you can't just unhate something that you absolutely despise, can you? It was the best feeling over to push you into that pool. <laughs> From now on, I might just push any old person over when no one's looking. <laughs> Sabrina. Well then, you better get going, old lady. I don't want you to make the wedding hall dirty with your wet clothes. <laughs> Whatever, I don't even want to go anyways. Bye bye. <laughs> The wedding's about to begin, by the way. I'm about to have the time of my life. <laughs> I will go home. But let me say one last thing to you. I really did try to meet in the middle with you. But I guess I'm allowed to give up on you after what you've done to me today. You're going to regret pushing me into that pool. <laughs> That's great. We'll see you then. I can't take you anymore. I'll make sure that you'll never forgive yourself for this. Be prepared. You're starting to get annoying. Just go home and tuck yourself into bed, you wet old hag. <laughs> the exit's that way. Even if you beg on your knees while crying, I won't stop you. Do you need some therapy or what? It's always the old ladies and their endless, meaningless conversations. You're the same as all the others, so shut up. Molly, please come back to the wedding hall. Please. Ben's with you, isn't he? Please just bring him back. Yes, Ben's with me. My kind little brother got worried about his soaking wet older sister and made sure that I got home safe. Well, please tell him to come back to the wedding this instant. The whole crowd is panicking because he won't show up. The workers are saying that they're going to have to call the wedding off if the groom won't show up. You don't have to worry about that, honey. I heard Ben making a call to the wedding company earlier. He was talking about calling the wedding off anyways. What? Why on earth would he do that? Gee, I wonder why, Sabrina. Why would I ever want to get married to you if this was who you really were? Really, pushing your own fiancé's older sister into a pool before the wedding. Seriously. Ben, is that you? I can't believe this. If you didn't like how I was talking about my sister so much, then why didn't you just let me know? You should have just said that you would have hated me no matter what I did. Then I would have thought of other ways to have you two get to know each other. But you just ruined it, all by pushing her into a pool before our wedding. What kind of psycho comes up with an idea like that? Please don't call me a psycho, honey. I just needed her to leave, and that was the way that I was sure would get her to leave. That was your idea? After thinking everything through. Well then, I guess I just saved my children from inheriting your tiny brain genetics. How could you say that? I'm not even mad anymore. I'm disappointed. The wedding's over. And I'm regretting that I ever got engaged to you. We're getting divorced as soon as we get the chance. Wait, please, just wait a minute. I don't want to get divorced from you. I don't care. This is the only option that's left for me. I can't get married to someone who can't value my family the same way I do. Wait, we, we can talk this out. I know that you're angry right now, but please, just think about how I felt. What do you mean? You know this, don't you? That all of the old ladies at work would bully me and treat me horribly. And that I hate everyone that I consider to be an old lady. I have a valid reason to hate your sister. And if you're my fiancé, then you should be understanding towards these things. Stop acting like the victim. You get hated on because you slack off at work, right? Well? I tried my very best to be as understanding as I could towards you. 
so I contacted your workplace, see if they could take any actions to make things better for you. They told me that they would run some checks and interviews to see if there really was any issue. What? You contacted them? Yeah, because I cared for you. And I couldn't bear to keep seeing you so worn out because of your work. I was ready to go as far as to hire a lawyer and sue the company for it. Oh no. But what do I receive in response? A call to come over to their office to address some issues with you. They told me that after inspection and interviews, they came to the conclusion that you were the one who was making them look bad. You were making fun of your senior colleagues as soon as you first got into the company, weren't you? I heard that you would ridicule the other workers because you were the only young one there. No, th this is a misunderstanding. No, it ain't, Sabrina. They even called over your colleagues to talk face to face with me. What? They had some of the things that you said to them recorded as proof. And I got to listen to some of them. I heard my fiance call people hags, make fun of their physical features. It let me ask you how you thought that wouldn't be hated at work if you treated everyone around you like that. I'm not on your side anymore. As a matter of fact, no one is. Please don't say that, Ben. Your colleagues aren't in the wrong. My sister ain't in the wrong. If anything, this means that you were just harassing my older sister for no apparent reason. You better give her a proper apology sometime soon. And know that I'll never forgive you for this. My sister is 10 years older than me, so what? I'm sure my sister had a difficult time figuring out how to deal with such a young brother. But she was always there to help me with my homework. She even cooked when my parents were working until late. But my sister is the best sister in the world. Ben, I'll apologize for every single word I've said until now, so please don't leave me. Please come back, we can still finish the wedding. Everyone gathered just to congratulate us. We can't just make them leave, can we? I don't care. Wedding is cancelled, and that's final. I'll make sure that the cancellation fee goes to you, so be prepared for that. Please forgive me for everything I've done. I know that I can't take back what I said, but I regret everything deeply. So please help me get back together with Ben. He's already made up his mind about the divorce, and I can't get him to listen to me. Just sign the divorce papers, Sabrina. I want my little brother to get married to someone who can make him the happiest boy in the world. And I'm sorry, but you've proven to us yourself that you aren't that someone. Please don't say something like that. I'll be a completely different person from now on. I'll be unbelievable friendly to you. What? You've taken very good care of your brother that's ten years younger than you, haven't you? Then I'm sure you could do the same with a younger sister as young. Please think of me as a younger sister and take good care of me. Why the hell would I want to take care of you? I hate your guts. Huh? Asking me for help won't do you any good, so you should just give up on that and give up altogether and just get a divorce from my brother. I'll never get divorced! We just got married to each other, and I still love Ben. Well, it looks like Ben doesn't love you back anymore. He even went as far as to say that he doesn't even remotely feel any interest in you. He hates me that much? I mean, I guess I was a little annoying, but all I did was have fun making fun of old ladies. The way you say it all I did just goes to show off how little you regret doing what you did. I'm confident that Ben won't even bother listening to whatever you have to say with that mentality like that. So just get the divorce done with and go gather money to pay for the cancellation fee and compensation. What? What do you mean compensations? Isn't that money that people who cheat have to pay? I never cheated on Ben. You pay compensation when you force men to hold pain on someone else. It doesn't have to be cheating. When you pushed your fiance's older sister into a pool. My brother had to endure mental pain because of that, and I endured mental pain as well. I need you to pay for my dress and purse since they got injured by the water. But are you finally starting to realize the scale of what you started between us? Well, that's the idea. So neither I nor my brother will go easy on you. 
we won't be making any deductions towards the price. And make sure it's a one-time payment. A one-time payment? Good luck. It's scary when a 30-year-old ugly hat gets mad, isn't it? Ha! Huh. After Sabrina finally gave up, she signed the divorce paper, making the divorce official. On top of that, the cancellation fee and compensation added up to $80,000. After borrowing money from several shady organizations and her own payments, Sabrina was finally able to make the payment. After that, she was fired from her job for everything she'd done to her colleagues. Now she's trying to get married to a rich man by attending matchmaking parties, hosted all over the state. However, most of the other attendees are college students in their 20s, so she's getting made fun of like never before, being 25. Hey Mark, where the heck are you right now? Yeah, hello Derek, I'm just taking my lunch break outside the office right now actually. Oh, well good for you. But you do know that there is still plenty of work that needs to be done, don't you? But the new hire is taking break as if there isn't a care in the world, good for you! I'm really sorry, is there a problem with me doing this? Yeah, it's not just you, it's the whole dang world. Nobody has any common sense these days. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, you're married, right? Well, I have a fiancé who I'm marrying soon, but I'm not quite married yet. Why do you ask? Well, I bet she's a real looker too, isn't she? You must have such a happy little family. But just how do you expect to be able to take care of them? And there's still so much work to do! I suppose the only answer I can give you is that I'll work even harder than I am now, huh? There we go, that's the spirit, now you're getting it! So anyways, you're gonna be working overtime tonight. Wait, what? Well, you just said that you wanted to work even harder than you are now, so I'm just giving you what you asked for. I understand that, but I'm already working on a project right now, so I really don't think I need more work on top of that. You just said that you were going to work even harder than you are right now, didn't you? Well, if that's the case, then you need to take on a second project and work. I guess I see the point that you're making. But the only thing is that I was given this assignment by the head of our department, so I think he would really prefer if I focus on this for the time being. Oh, really? You got your work straight from the boss? Well, don't worry. I'll go to him and tell him that you're done with whatever it was he assigned you. Just send me the files and I'll present them to him and you can get started on your next assignment. Derek, please wait a minute. I really do have my hands full with what I'm working on right now and I don't think it's in any shape to be turned in as of now. So you're just gonna go against the direct order from your superior? Hmm, I guess I'll have to make sure everyone knows about this in time for your next performance review. And when that happens, well, I just can't imagine you having a very long future here with us. No, it isn't anything like that. I'm not trying to disobey you or anything. It's just that this project isn't really ready to be handed in, so I can't give it to you right now. Besides, I thought that we already talked about this earlier, right? I asked you to please not give me any overtime if possible. I promise that as soon as I'm finished with what I'm doing, though, I can assist you with whatever it is that you need. Oh, please, don't be such a baby. Everyone has to work a little overtime now and then. Just shut up and do as I say, got it? I have a date. I'm not going to be late because of you. You wouldn't happen to be going out with that girl you ran into while going into that store you're always talking about, right? That's right. I guess news really does travel fast around here. Don't tell me that you're jealous or anything. Sorry, Derek, but aren't you married? Do you think your wife will be mad about you doing this? It's not really a date. Jeez, we're just grabbing some food is all. Why don't you mind your own business and never mention my wife again, huh? Honestly, just who do you think you're talking to your superior like this? Well, the only thing is that I heard the place where she worked is kind of expensive. What's expensive? What are you talking about? Yeah, I just mean that I haven't really heard good things about the store's reputation. Yeah, at least from other colleagues I've heard mention it. So, because you don't like a shop, all the employees there must be bad is what you're saying. You don't even know this girl. She is really nice and I want to sit here and watch you slander her. I know that she probably is nice while she's at work, but do you think it's possible that she's just doing that because it's her job? Don't go mixing up this girl with all the other hussies that work at that place. 
She moved here from the country and isn't tainted like the other women here. I'm just teaching her a few things about life in the big city is all. I see. Well, I know we keep on calling it a shop, but just to be clear, we are talking about a bar, aren't we? If you know what we're talking about, there's no need to spell it out. Besides, you're married, but I'm sure that you must like to go out and have a little fun too. Don't worry, you can tell me. We're both married men here. I understand what you're saying, but my wife is more than enough for me. Thank you very much. Oh, well, aren't you a little boy scout? But we'll see how long you can put up with that little act of yours. Maybe I should invite this girl over to the office one day and tell her to show you a good time. I might finally get the stick out of your butt. You really don't need to do anything like that, Derek. Man, you really are no fun, do you know that? Has anyone ever told you that you're actually a bummer to be around? I bet when you were a kid in school, you were always a quiet kid in the corner with no one to play with, weren't you? Derek, I'm really sorry, but can I please just eat my lunch and enjoy the rest of my break before it's over? Alright, fine, but I'll leave all the work I want you to do on your desk and I'll come around tomorrow to pick it all up. So, you want me to get whatever it is that you have for me done by today? Well, duh! I need all this work ready to be sent out by tomorrow, so just get it done! I'm sure a nerd like you will have no problem in doing it. But I already told you that I have other work I need to do. Listen, Mark. You've been going home at the same time every day since you started working here, right? All that tells me is that you really aren't giving your all to the company. A real dedicated employee would be doing much more overtime. I'm sorry, Derek, but do you even know what it is that I'm working on right now? And there you go, back talking me again. Listen, I'm your superior, and I'm giving you an order. If you want to get ahead in this company, you need to learn to take order and keep your traps shut. I wanted your opinion, I'd ask for it. You've seriously got some nerve, you know that, Mark. What is it this time, Derek? I mean that I was just called into our department head's office, and thanks to you, I wasn't able to go home in time. What happened when you went to talk to your boss? Uh, he wanted to talk to me about the work that I gave you to do. He was mad because you didn't make it the way that I normally do. Well, I'm sorry that we have different styles, but I only did what you asked of me. Well, that's because it should have been obvious that I wanted you to make it the way that I would have. <sighs> now my boss is suspicious of me. I guess I don't know what else to say, but I'm sorry. Which reminds me, I see that you're scheduled to take tomorrow off, is that right? That's right, I put in the time off request a while ago too. And just what is so important that you have to miss work, huh? Well, my wife and I were going to go to the courthouse to have our civil service performed and become legally married. Then that's the big reason you can't come in tomorrow. Are you kidding me? I already cleared it with your boss and he said it was fine if I did. You do know that unlike you, I actually care about this job and work hard at it, right? But you just think you can take time off for whatever you want, no matter how small, huh? Cancel your time off and come into work tomorrow, got it? But I've already made sure to complete everything that I would have had to get done tomorrow today. Besides, I've already had this time off cleared with the department head. Don't you remember telling me that you wanted to work even harder for the company? Of course I remember saying that, and I meant it. Well then stop talking the talk and start walking the walk. You already screwed up big time with the work that I gave you before. I bet your wife isn't even all that great. She's probably ugly, huh? Why'd you send me a picture of her? Surely you must have a bunch on your phone unless she's so ugly that you haven't even got one. <laughs> Derek, I am not going to send you a picture of my wife. Furthermore, I don't care what you have to say about me, but please do not bring my wife into this. There you go, thinking that you can talk to me like that. You're my underling, and that basically means your wife is too. So I can talk about your wife in whatever way I please. And just what is she going to do about it anyways? It's not like she's going to be mad at me for some things I say to you. I didn't ever say that she would be upset with you. I just don't understand why you feel the need to talk so rudely about people's spouses. Well, you're at least going to invite me to the wedding, right? I really want to see the kind of woman you're making such a big fuss over. 
Well, we were only inviting family to the wedding, so... You mean you're not going to invite me? I'm your boss. I'll prepare a speech for you and everything. And there'll be a chance for everyone to learn a little bit more about the work that you do. Derek, I'm getting a call from a client, so I'm going to go now. Oh, you little baby. I know that you're just trying to run away right now. It isn't that at all. I promise you that. And just who is this client that wants to talk to you, huh? It's the V Corporation. Feel free to look into the file we have on them if you want. You think I have time to do something stupid like that? Whatever, just know that after you come back from your one day honeymoon, I'm gonna make sure that you know the real meaning of work. Derek, would you mind telling me where you are right now? I'm in the office cafeteria, what do you want? Well, I noticed that my lunchbox was missing from the fridge. I asked around the office and people say they saw you carrying it with you, so I just wanted to ask if you took my lunch. Hmm, your lunchbox wouldn't happen to be red and black with a handle on top, would it? So you do have my lunchbox. I was afraid of this. Can you please return it to me? Huh? Did your wife pack your lunch or something? Is that why you want it back? Well, yes, actually, but also, it's my lunch. Ah, uh, well, I'm afraid that you're too late. I've already eaten it all. So you really just took someone else's lunch out of the fridge and ate it knowing that it wasn't yours? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't actually eat the food. I threw it all in the trash instead. It looks so nasty that you should be thanking me for saving you from it. I guess the married life must be going really well, huh? <laughs> you didn't even eat the food? You just threw away someone else's lunch? I already told you that you ought to be grateful to me for what I did. Eating a lunch like that might have landed you in the hospital. You really need to tell your wife to take a cooking class or two. <laughs> Derek, do you even realize what you've done? You're through now. What are you talking about, huh? How am I, though? Because I make fun of your wife now and then? It's not my fault if you and your wife are equally useless at your jobs. All I'm saying is that your wife needs to learn how to cook. I would just like to know how any of that is your business. I never had any problem with any of my lunches before. So what about any of this is your problem? Here you go again, trying to start fighting with me. Is this really how you think you can get ahead in this company? Derek, I'm gonna be honest with you, I really don't like you, and I really don't think that I can cover for you anymore. You cover for me? Is that supposed to be some kind of joke? I don't care whose lunch it is, you can't just take it out of the fridge and throw it away. You need to take responsibility for your actions, which have been way out of line with how any rational person would act. How dare you tell me what I should be doing with my life? Would you mind coming to the meeting room on the second floor once you've finished with whoever's lunch you're eating, Derek? Why should I do that? I don't remember having any meetings scheduled. You're right, this is an emergency meeting, so please go to the room as soon as you finish your lunch. We need to have a little talk about how you've been treating the staff here at the office. Mark, I really would like to take this chance to express how very... Very sorry I am for all that I've said and done. Wow, this is quite a strange message to be getting from you. Well, it's just, I had no idea that you were the grandson of the CEO of our company. But that means that you're also next in line to take over the company. I also hear that you were working for V Corp before you came here. That's right, I've worked at a lot of places to gain as much experience as I could. And is it really true that your wife is the daughter of the current CEO over there? Because I had no idea about that either! So again, I really am so sorry for all that I said to you. I'm curious though, is the only reason you're apologizing to me because you found out who my grandfather is? Well, I, I just... I'm just trying to take accountability for my actions like you told me to. Oh, really? Because just a few hours ago, it seems like you had no intention of giving me any sort of apology. Yes, of course, but I've just been thinking a lot since our time in the meeting room. And I realize how much hurt I've caused, and I just want to say that it won't happen again. 
So please, can you find it in your heart to not fire me? You remember what else we talked about in the meeting room, right? Like about how you chased off several promising employees with your behavior? Eight people in the last three years have all quit because of you. This is really unheard of. But surely I'm not the only reason why they wanted to quit working here, right? When we gave them a survey before they left, they all blamed the abuse of management. They had nothing else bad to say about working here except for you constantly trying to slow off your own work onto them and hurling abuse. They all finally got fed up with your attitude and walked away. Even I've gone through something similar now. But I already said that I'm really sorry. I don't remember ever asking you for an apology, Derek. I only asked you to acknowledge the damage that you caused to these people's careers. They were all brilliant employees with impeccable resumes, who realized that working here wasn't worth having to deal with you. Which means that you've single-handedly caused a great deal of trouble for this company. Why would you think that it's okay to treat employees that way? I just, well, uh, they all seemed like they knew what they were doing more than I did. And so that's why you tried to chase them off? You really are pathetic. Please, I'm sorry. I don't know what else I can say, but I'm so, so sorry. It isn't all of your subordinates who talk poorly about you, though. A lot of the new hires said that they were grateful to have you shown them the ropes, and even some of your own supervisors have given you high marks. See? I knew that wasn't all bad. I really am a good worker. But the fact is that you still drove away promising talent, and you need to face punishment for that. Lucky for you, however, the business doesn't take firing people too lightly. If you can promise to stop harassing other employees and do your own work, then you might not be fired. You mean it? You mean that I still have my job? But you should know that I also have my wife here, and she says that I shouldn't let you off the hook so easily. Well, I don't really see why your wife should have any say on how we should conduct our business. Really? Even though she's so tightly connected with our clientele in the V group? No, I mean, yes, I mean, can you please just tell her that I'm sorry? And are you sorry for chasing off the other employees? Are you going to apologize to all eight of them as well? Well, I even know where I would find them. But you need to clear your name, don't you? At the very least, you need to apologize to my wife. Well then, I do sincerely apologize to her. Just please don't fire me. I promise to give my all to the company from now on. And I'll never say another mean word to anyone as long as I'm here. I see. Unfortunately for you, I'm afraid that the decision is out of my hand already. And your apology won't affect the company's decision to fire you. Wait, what do you mean by that? I mean that by insulting my wife, you've upset the CEO of one of our most important business partners. You might not know this, but the CEO of V is a very strict man who loves his daughter very much. But I said I was sorry! This isn't fair! Please, you have to say something to help me, Mark! I promise to never do anything of like that ever again! In that case, I hope that you hold on that attitude at your next job. Because management here has decided that you're too big of a liability. Not to mention that you have insulted my wife. Have a nice life, Derek. A few weeks after that, the paperwork was processed and Derek was officially let go of our company. And since the process was done according to the books, he had no room for resource. Afterwards, I was tasked with tracking down and reaching out to the staff that Derek had chased off. I expressed apology on behalf of the company, and I informed them that Derek had been let go. We offered them a generous employment package if they agreed to come back and work for us. Some did, while others said they would never set another foot in our offices. I heard that a few weeks after Derek was fired, his wife divorced him. Apparently, it wasn't the losing job that did it. Instead, she found out about the woman that Derek was seeing on the side, and that was the last straw for her. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this.